The GA4 property structure is actually something that's quite confusing to a lot of people, especially coming from the world of universal analytics, where it was clearly defined. We had properties, accounts, and we had views. Views are the biggest thing to get around when it comes to using Google Analytics 4. GA4 doesn't have views. And the way that that used to work in universal analytics is that you used to send all your data directly into one property, and then you used to kind of carve it out and create different subsets of these views of where we did all of our reporting. In GA4, it's kind of flipped on its head. What it's doing now is it's collecting all data together at the same reporting level, and then you can use features like comparisons or filters to kind of get at specific bits of data. But that's kind of confusing if we're going from one setup to another, and there's a big question mark around how the hell do we even set up Google Analytics 4 when we're used to a system that doesn't exist anymore. And a big consideration around this is actually thinking around how many websites you own. And when I talk about websites, I'm not talking about CMSs, we're talking about root domains. Cookies, uh, like the GA4 cookie or the Google Analytics cookie in general is a set of root domain level. So it doesn't matter how many subdomains you've got. It doesn't matter if you've got a WordPress and a Squarespace website. If it's running under the same website like measurelab.co.uk, that will be a shared cookie. And that's all that Google Analytics cares about, to be honest, anyway. So if you've got one domain, it's really easy. You put one data stream and one property in GA4 and you're done. However, there's some nuance there. For example, what if I've got an American, French and a UK website within there? Maybe it's measurelab.co.uk slash FR slash US slash UK. And that's actually where the confusion comes up because you might have, for example, separate ad accounts. And by ad accounts, we're talking about Google ad accounts, the Google marketing platform, DV360, SA360 and the like. For me, the way that I structure my clients' Google Analytics 4 properties is actually dependent more so around their marketing account setup. And if you've got separate Google Ads accounts for each of your regions or each different territory, then I'm quite likely to do the same within Google Analytics 4 with properties. The thing about this and the reason that I'm saying it's to do with the Google Ads accounts is because when you connect your Google Ads accounts to a GA4 property, all of the data of that property is shared with that Google Ads account. So for example, audiences and conversions are all shared with that, or with all connected Google Ads accounts. So for me, if I'm connecting to a global GA4 property and I'm trying to optimize my French Google Ads account, but I'm receiving all conversions and all audiences, or at least I'm sharing the same quota with all of these other regions, it can be quite frustrating, it can be quite hard, and we might hit those edges of the free version of GA4 quite quickly. So in that example, what I'm inclined to do is to think of it as a replication from their, their Google Ads setup. So if you've got one Google Ads, or if you've got a whole ecosystem of ads accounts for France, for US, for Germany, for UK, then I would actually replicate that in terms of the property structure in GA4. It's not a hard and fast rule. There's no right or wrong answer here. And, and what I've been talking about so far is thinking about the free version of Google Analytics 4. If you're paying for GA360, that changes things quite substantially because in a sense they've got, GA4 has views, they call them sub-properties, but now they're behind the paywall of GA4 360. So if you've got the 360 license, if you're paying for Google Analytics, then you can almost do a like-for-like -like transition from Universal Analytics using their view structure to properties in GA4 using sub-properties, and you can keep all of your account linking completely separate. If you're not paying for GA4 and you don't want to, because it's not a cheap thing to pay for, um, then we have to think of it in terms of having separate properties that we can connect our ads accounts to and we can export the data in these kind of separate environments. It's not ideal because then if, what if you wanted to do your global reporting, then you're going to have to f figure out a way of kind of adding all these different data sets together. But that's the way I would try and structure things. I suppose I'm probably more inclined to keep it easier when it comes to the marketing side of things and maybe slightly harder when it comes to the reporting. We can use things like Looker Studio and do all the joins over there and put it into one dashboard or more likely is that you'll be connecting it all to Google BigQuery and do all the joins over there. So the kind of joined up reporting is going to be easier than trying to unpick all of the marketing activity. Whichever way you go, um, I've written a blog all around this and all the considerations around GA360, uh, your ads accounts, domain structures, cookies, things like this. So what I'll do is I'll link off to it here um, and just looking at what we've got. Um, yeah, so the whole article's there to read through. I'll, I'll, this is kept updated. Um, for just in case there's anything that changes or the best practices change or new features come out. Um, but yeah, the biggest considerations are going to be how you structure your Google Ads accounts and the wider Google Marketing Platform accounts, or if you've got 360. Otherwise, if you've got one website and you've got one domain, then you're easy. Um, it's easy. You can just set up one property, one data stream. 
Uh, same for apps as well. Just think of it when you're setting up your app ecosystem in Firebase, you've got one project is one property. It's connected at a one-to-one -one level. So that's pretty much taken care of for you. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, again, I'll link off to the documentation that we've written all around this. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.